Florida School for the Deaf and the Blind logo. ASL English Bilingual Program Overview, Tracy C. Snow, Administrator of Instructional Services. ASL English Bilingual Program Overview. 2016-2017. I am Tracy C. Snow, and I am the Administrator of Instructional Services. Now to tell you a little bit about myself. I've already told you my name. Tracy Snow. I was born hearing, raised hearing, my family is hearing. I graduated from a four-year school and after I was done I wanted to go to Gallaudet University to become a teacher for deaf children. I started learning some sign language in college, taking classes, and when I was ready to go to Gallaudet and visit, I realized that the signing environment was something that I didn't understand, but I kept a positive attitude. I applied for college and I made it in. I also applied to run one of the residence hall and they hired me for that job. So I learned so much and so much sign through immersion and being with deaf and hard of hearing individuals. Later, after I graduated, I came to the Florida School from the Deaf and the Blind and became a teacher. I've taught, I've been a specialist, a director, a coach, a sponsor. I've done so many things here at FSDB for the last 22 years. My personal story is that my husband is deaf and I have two deaf children. In my home, we use American Sign Language. When I come to work, I use both languages, ASL and spoken English, and I go back and forth using those two languages. I think it's important that we understand each and every one's story, that we share our story with each other so that we can understand each other's journey, our backgrounds, and gain a better understanding of how we can move forward and work towards this new instructional approach at FSDB. Last spring, Dr. Prickett announced that FSDB will start an ASL English bilingual instructional program starting this fall, which is occurring right now. The school was just so thrilled to start this new journey. This presentation was already given to the boarding program last May. Again, I delivered it during the summertime and explained it to people who were working on campus during the summer. And again, most recently at the board of trustee meeting. And that occurred in August. And the reason why these presentations were given was to help with um, terms, definitions, what we were doing here, how we were progressing and moving forward. But the most important thing to understand is that we need to be judgmental free, that we need to seek first to understand. And that is a quote from The Seven Habits. And that was authored by Stephen Covey. And last fall, last spring here at the school, FSDB did learn and have training for the seven habits. So I think that is something that is a key point for all of us to remember is to seek first to understand. We should retain our judgment. What is ASL? Moving forward in the presentation, I'm going to give you some terminology. And the first one we, I wanna talk about with you is what is ASL? So three points to share with you is that American Sign Language, ASL, is a visual language. Second, with signing, the brain is processing and learning linguistic information through the eyes. Third, we have hand shape, we have placement, we have movement of the hands, as well as facial expressions and body movement, all of these components play an important part in conveying information. Sign language is not a universal language. It's not the same in every country. Every country has their own sign language. There's also regional signs in the United States that have their own signs. It can parallel that to spoken English all around the world. Each country has their own spoken languages. You need to understand that these spoken languages and American Sign Language have their own unique rules, grammar, and syntax. ASL is just like other languages, just like spoken languages. Each of these languages change and grow and transition. New signs pop up just like new spoken words pop up in the languages. 
For example, Facebook, that is a word 10, 15 years ago that nobody said, just like there was no signs back then. So it parallels the same thing. Also, ASL is used primarily in the United States and some parts of Canada. In different high schools and universities and colleges, they all accept American Sign Language as a foreign language credit. What is Signed Exact English? The next topic, what is Signed Exact English, or C? Signed Exact English is a system to communicate English words and expression through sign language. Signed Exact English is not a language. Signed Exact English uses English grammar. For example, its vocabulary and terminology and ASL signs is borrowed for Signed English, and sometimes they are changed. And when you're using Signed Exact English, and you're borrowing those ASL signs, you oftentimes will initialize them. For example, the sign for car. This is the ASL sign for car. And in signed English, you would sign it like this. So the sign for bus could be made like this in ASL. In signed English, it would look like this. What is SIMCOM? Simultaneous communication. What does SIMCOM, signed like this, or simultaneous communication, or communicating at the same time mean? Simultaneous communication, or SIMCOM, is signing and speaking at the same time. SIMCOM tends to follow English word order and its structure, so it follows the spoken English. SIMCOM is not a language. What is total communication? So what does total communication mean? And we sign it like this. Total communication is an approach for teaching deaf children. Its goal is to use a various different modes, for example, signing, oral, spoken English, writing, auditory, visual, visual aids, all depending upon what the students need. Total communication is a philosophy and not a communication method. Total communication philosophy was most popular during the 1970s until about the 1980s. Total communication often results in simultaneous communication. What is bye-bye or bilingual bicultural? What does bye-bye or bilingual bicultural mean? Bilingual bicultural, that education philosophy was based on the studies of James Cummings. He researched the model of linguistic independence, and that occurred in 1976. Bye-bye. Many deaf education institutions adopted that for their native sign language or first language users. Spoken and written languages are considered a second language in this approach and is acquired either independently or at the same time. Sign language is the primary method of instruction. Bicultural or bye-bye education emphasizes deaf culture and strives to create confidence in deaf children by exposing them to the deaf community to help them have greater self-esteem. What is an ASL English bilingual program? 
So what is having an ASL English bilingual program? ASL in English, in this type of approach, is supported by the acquisition and development and use of both languages, both ASL and English. Bilingual means the development and use of two or more languages. ASL is a visual language and English is a spoken or written language, and they are different. Language development is uniquely fit to each child. All children who can see have access to ASL. Children must acquire language before they can learn to read and write English. In order for them to have literacy development, children must have a strong foundation of ASL and English. The goal for a bilingual approach to instruction is that each child will have both proficiency and skill in ASL and in English. Spoken English is a component of this approach. It is valued, encouraged, and incorporated, and is specific to the individual child characteristics and skills. In order for FSDB to be successful using an ASL and English bilingual approach, we must have significant planning done. We will have school-wide planning, which entails all of the staff and teachers, students, and parents to have a clear understanding of this process as we move forward and for this approach to instruction. We must also understand and remember each individual child and make sure that we are fitting their needs and their skill level. Finally, we must focus on teacher training because it is most important that this instructional approach is for the children. So we must provide teachers with adequate training. What are the goals for implementing this change for people who have direct contact with deaf or hard of hearing students and adults? FSDB has established certain goals. And the goals that we have for this change are for our staff, for the adults who are working closely with our deaf and hard of hearing students. Going back to the original point in the presentation at the beginning, I talked about the seven habits. And I talked about how we learned about the seven habits to become effective people. Well, it applies here as well. We need to begin with the end in mind. We must first think of our end goal and keep that in the forefront of our mind as we move forward. We believe that every student, when they graduate from FSDB, that they will become bilingual in both English and in ASL. We are gonna provide them quality instruction. We are gonna support their acquisition and their learning of both ASL and English. And with English, we are gonna focus on reading and writing and spoken English if appropriate. We need to make sure that we're fitting the appropriate needs of our students and matching their potential. In order to do this, we are going to make sure that in the classroom, language is clear and that we are using ASL and English. We are going to make sure that both languages are equal. ASL and spoken English, as in SimCom, will not be done at the same time. We are going to keep those languages separate. Teachers must be purposeful with their planning. They must look at the needs of the students that they teach and provide support for both instruction and also look at what their language needs are. So here would be a classroom application. So remember that all of the classes all day will not look the same. We are going to strive to meet the needs of every student. For example, in a class, you may first have the teacher using whole group instruction and using American Sign Language to teach. After that is over, they may go into small groups, may work one-on-one, -on -one, or may work in pairs, and this could vary. During that small group time, the teacher may take the opportunity to work with those students who are using spoken English, to work with students who are acquiring ASL, or to work with those students who have excelled in using American Sign Language but are needing help with their reading and their writing of English but it's important that they are meeting the needs of the students. I also want to remember that we are encouraging people to sign at all times. 
we want this to be a signing environment, which means that we're going to be signing in the classrooms, we're going to be signing in the residence hall, out in common spaces, at different events like for athletics and sports. There's going to be signing at all times. The staff and adults and students, regardless of your signing skills, please go ahead and use them. Remember that we want this environment to be rich with both visual language, facial cues, and printed language. Remember that we are trying to support each other. We're trying to seek first to understand. We're trying to have a judge-free environment. What are the expected outcomes and benefits to students? So, this new approach has expectations and goals for results for the students. We know it will benefit them. We believe that this approach is going to support all people in improving their sign language skills. We know that FSDB's environment will become an accessible place for everyone. Students will have the opportunity to have access to language visually from many different people. Students will also have more role models, different adults that they can interact with and communicate with instead of limiting it to only a few people who sign proficiently. Students will also be able to learn and communicate from people around them in their environment. Students will also have more friends, people that they can hang around with and talk. Student skills in both ASL and English, regardless if it's reading or writing and spoken English, will improve because we are going to develop both languages. For students who are deaf or hard of hearing, their world is going to explode because of the accessibility that they are going to have to learn and communicate and interact with friends and different people. Their world is going to grow. Now, something I want you to understand. This is 2016 2017 school year, and it is a year for learning for us. Remember, the president of our school just announced this last spring, and now we are engaged in learning and trying to apply the how. We are finding different resources. We are learning different methods. We believe that as we work together collaboratively, we will become successful. First of all, we need to encourage all people to come together, to come to the table with an open mind, to be ready to learn from each other. We need to remember to seek first to understand. And we need to find different ways to support each other, to find those who are struggling and to support them. We definitely need to trust ourselves. So I'm telling you to trust yourself. If you have a comfort zone that you're feeling like this is where you normally are, I would like you to change and adjust that and step out of that comfort zone and be ready for the challenge. And lastly, we'd like you to stay in your lane and pay attention to what you're doing while checking your mirrors, just like as you're driving a car. You check those mirrors every once in a while, but we want you, if you're in the classroom or the dorm or if you're a parent, whatever your role and responsibility is, move forward. Check what's going on around you, but don't worry about what's going around you. Keep moving forward. Professional development, academic staff. So here's an update with what teachers have been doing for professional development in the academic department, the academic staff. We have been very busy. We've been having consultants come to our campus to train our staff. The first happened in June over the summer. We had Kristen DePerry and Todd Zubek come to FSDB for two days of training. We learned so much about ASL grammar and structure. It was incredible two days. The objectives for this training were that we would understand the content and instructional design of bilingual grammar curriculum and how we would develop this. We discussed the different lessons and structures, what we should be doing first, second, and third to help teach the students the structure of the language. And 
we also wanted to assess and document students' growth and progress. So we learned these three things during the two days of training. The other opportunities we had were having Holly Geislin. She is from Indiana. She came here and met with our audiologists and speech pathologists. It was a wonderful day of training to help them prepare for this new approach. That training focused on three different goals, and they were to learn how speech and language assessments are used in a bilingual, bimodal setting, to learn how speech and language therapy services would work in a bilingual, bimodal setting, and also how dismissal of language services are addressed in a bilingual, bimodal setting for signing and spoken English. Another professional development opportunity we had occurred during pre-planning, and this is before the students arrived. The topic of that was planning and implementing an ASL and English bimodal bilingual program. And the presenters of that day were Lorene, Sims, and Suzanne Scott. They came to FSDB to present to the academic department. This occurred recently in August. And just to let you know, Dr. Sims is a professor at Gallaudet University for the Department of Education. She is an ASL and English bilingual consultant. And Ms. Scott is a retired audiologist, and she's also an ASL English bilingual education consultant. The training for that day had three objectives, and they were to define and explain what the benefits were for an ASL and English approach to instruction for deaf and hard of hearing children. They also explained the background and the concepts related to systematic language planning and the importance for language development for both ASL and spoken English. And finally, they explained how to use a student's individualized language plan in order to develop an implementation plan for teaching. We will continue to have more opportunities for learning because we know this year we need to emphasize on learning and professional growth. For example, the academic staff will have a bilingual specialist in order to help them, help all of us improve in our development and knowledge for both English linguistics and ASL linguistics. Teachers will have the opportunity to take sign class, be able to learn more about how to improve their signing skills, and to give them different opportunities to do so. Students will have support from an ASL teacher that we will be hiring. We will also have tutoring for them after school or before school, and possibly even during school to help them acquire ASL. And the consultants that I just listed, we may ask for them to return, or maybe there'll be a new consultant who will come and work with us. We also desire to work with and partner with other residential schools across the country, those that have finished implementing a bilingual approach to instruction, that we may learn the best practices from them. We will have a curriculum team established this year focusing on bilingual instruction, in the past, we've had math teams, ELA teams, career teams. Well, this year is the first time we will have a bilingual curriculum team focusing on bilingual education. We will also have different resources like videos and other such things focusing on ASL linguistics and ASL acquisition for people to view and study and learn from. We will also establish a group, a school-wide committee of such for people to get together weekly to discuss the different topics and issues. And the main goal of that will be brainstorming and problem solving on how we can improve what is going on on our campus this year. And lastly, we will develop 
an action plan. And that action plan is establishing certain goals and expectations, who will be involved, who will be sharing this work, what are the different things that we want to accomplish. And that's what an action plan will entail. And it's going to be focusing on professional development, positive culture and environment, how to include all people in improving their sign language skills and communication skills, and as well as having transparency and communication for internal and external stakeholders. Be proactive. We want to make sure that we are being proactive. Again, that's one of our seven habits. I think that's the third one that I talked about today. We want to make sure that all people have what is called a growth mindset. And I'll tell you a little bit about this means. We had this training last year and we learned more about this concept. For example, you might have a child who is three or four years old and is struggling to tie their shoes and they might say, I can't, I can't. But what we tell them is that you haven't learned yet. You haven't become proficient in this yet. We want all people to have the power of yet. We will get there. We will. We want to make sure that you control your circle of influence, which means if you can't change this person or this topic, change yourself first. It is most important that we practice at all times. In order to acquire sign language, you need to practice. In order for you to be skilled, you need to practice in order to learn more. Maybe you need to practice telling stories or jokes or interacting with people, but practice takes precedent. If you feel as though that you're intimidated by the sign language skills that you have, be bold. Try to practice signing. If you're timid, you're not going to improve. Most importantly, do not judge another person. We want to support each other. If you see a person who's struggling, maybe their signing skills aren't there, or maybe they forget to sign, we need to show support to that individual and encouragement to help them, to help all of us to collaborate together. Related to English, please, I encourage you to have words plastered everywhere. Do you remember in like elementary school with young children, we label everything? We'll continue to have words visible in the environment. It's important for students to see those words so that they can develop their English print. Encourage the students to write all the time. We're focusing on the signing, yes, but at the same time, we do not want to neglect the importance of writing. Any deaf adult will tell you they must be proficient in writing out in the world in order to survive. Writing is a key for success. Make sure you're taking the time to look at yourself and see that you are a collaborator and a supporter and you're involved in the teamwork. We want people who are willing to work together with others. Your mind and wondering should be focusing on immersion. If you're wondering what you should do, immerse yourself in reading and learning about the topic, conversing with other deaf people and deaf children, collaborating with other hearing people as you practice your sign language skills, immersion is the best way to learn. And remember, lastly, and most importantly, I can't emphasize this enough, it's not about you. It's about our students. So always think about them first and what would benefit them. Thank you.